reunited and it feels so good on this episode we welcome back director of experience matt lawhorn from broken bow yes nebraska broken bow central yeah. nebraska it's beautiful this time of year <laughs> atlas all access starts now Welcome back, buddy. Hey. You, uh, It's been a you, year. You look hairy. I have not shaved since I was last here. Okay, so let's let's start with that. Okay. Ta- because you've had the beard, right? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, just... People that have known you for years know that you've had the beard and stuff. Yep. You didn't in, in the beginning with us. But no. Then, so, and then talk me through what's happening here. Yeah, there's a lot. So, uh, I've got a buddy and his wife uh, was diagnosed with, with cancer, and so we he kind of started this pack that he wasn't going to cut his hair until like October. Okay. And, uh, I happened to be there that night. I think we were talking about it and I said, I'll do that. So I was, didn't wait, realize wait. was Misty there with no, you? No, no, oh. no. It was a okay. uh, night out and mm. she should have been there. Yeah, she should have. Little did I realize that I like my hair must grow like 10 times faster than his <laughs> and I'm going to look like a fat castaway when this is all said and done. Right. Like, you're going to look like, yeah, you're going like, to look like Tom Hanks had a buffet. Look what I the created. Island. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it is, uh, it's just getting, it's out of control. Oh, it's so, fantastic. But I'm going to get this trimmed up this week while I'm in Omaha. So if you're not cutting it until October and we'll get to this, actually, when you go to TravCon in September, September yeah. it's still going to be like this. Yeah. I should maybe just cut it in October, like there, why I'm there. It could. It'd be so hot. It's going to be hot it's going to be. Oh, gonna it's going to be. It's going to be. It's, it's going to suck. It's so bad. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Anyway, so let's I'm, talk I'm through, back. Let's talk through a couple of things experience-wise. Yep. Okay. So there's a lot of new travelers with us that don't understand kind of like we don't have a traditional marketing department. Right. Right. We've done away with that. Um, everybody has a marketing department. and. Mm-hmm. You know, it was kind of your vision to have to come into this backwards. And, and what is the experience from day one with our travelers till the day that they decide, like, I'm done traveling, right? Mm-hmm. So we want to stay connected with them throughout that entire process. And the experience team that we have does that. And we do that in a couple of different ways. And is it kind of what you want to talk Absolutely. about? Absolutely. Yes. You know, we have Atlas Adventures, and that's one of the main ones. Um, we want to get to know our, our travelers, and we want to be able to send them on um, outings or do events or, or purchase something that is going to help them um, go on an adventure, right? Sure. So say it's um, something for backpacking or it's a new, say they're huge uh, photographers and they want a new lens. Like we can help mm-hmm. pay for a portion of that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a way for us to, we're not just giving money out. This is a way, this is part of my budget, right? Like this doesn't mm-hmm. come out of anybody's contract. This comes out of my marketing piece, mm-hmm. right? So this experience piece um, with a traveler. I think that's important just to, because we'll get back to, we'll get back to exactly what those experiences are and that type of thing. But <clears throat> understand that as you, you'll see all kinds of videos videos online about how travel nurses and it's a pie and this you know you there's only so much of that and the company gets a certain percentage of that right i mean that's right. it, we're a for-profit company just like every other travel nurse staffing company yep. out there these at the atlas adventure comes out of our portion right it's not figured into your pay package anywhere no so no so again that is it's something that you wouldn't normally buy for yourself. Everybody has that one thing. Like, what would you not normally buy for yourself? Mm-hmm. You really would like it, but you're like, man, that is 400 bucks. I am not spending that. And that's the amount that the Atlas Adventure is, is $400. Mm-hmm. So um, it's, a, it's a significant um, piece that we like to focus on and like to try to really help out the traveler and, and do something fun. Well, it's living vicariously through their adventures, yeah. right? Yeah. That's- we got like people doing NASCAR stuff. Like they want to go drive a, a Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. Like that's this one guy's like, that's my dream. I want to, I want to drive a Lamborghini. Well, this is something you normally would never spend that kind of money on. But right. He's like, yeah, I'm doing it. Right. Skydiving or hot air balloons or mm-hmm. traveling. That's a big one. Like NFL games and NBA games. Yep. Like we've done all of those. Yep. And now, especially since we're getting back to normal sort of, we're, we're going back to doing those again. Sure. Yep. So. You know, we always make sure that, you know, birthdays are a big thing for us. We want to make sure that we're not forgetting people's birthdays, right? Mm-hmm. And that we, we do something for them. Um, we have what they call racks and we, um, every contract you get a hundred dollars. And so it's something that like, say they get to Nashville and you're like, you have to check out Kid Rock's bar. 
like I'm going to get you a gift card. Mm -hmm. Like go down there with your friends, check out this bar. It's amazing. So it's those little things that we can do in between contracts with them. So that's outside of the Atlas Adventure, the random act of kindness, yep. that, that rack is what we call it internally yep. here. If you hear that, if you hear that word, that's what that is. Right. Just like, Hey, go, go do this. Go check this out. Yeah. Or they say, Hey, there's an amazing restaurant in town and my friends would like to go out to eat. Mm -hmm. And, and you're like, Hey, I got a hundred bucks. Why don't you go out and I'll get all your hors d'oeuvres and, and you can have drinks and you know, you have a hundred dollars to spend to go yep. do this stuff or go to a game while you're in Nashville or go see the Preds or whatever. So mm. there's, um, there's a ton that you can do with this or get Nashville hot chicken. Oh yeah. So good. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let take a step back. A couple of weeks back was nurses week. Yep. We sent out those gifts that, you know, talk about the preparation behind that. Yep. So, you know, when you're looking at a gift for it, you know, a set amount of travelers, you have the full gamut. So you have men, women, young, old, you have everything. And so you're trying to figure out like, how do you get something that everybody's going to use? Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's, it's difficult because you can't, you know, you, you got to make it so general that it's something that's usable for everybody. And mm -hmm. so we did a cool, um, Pyrex type, uh, lunch container that they can take to work with them. Um, a great coffee mug that went went through like three different um, sets of trials, and we we finally found one that we liked, and it's, think, it's a cool coffee mug. I think I like this coffee mug the most out of all of them. Yeah, because we've had probably what two, three different ones. Yeah, three different ones. Yeah, and this might be my favorite. Yeah, it's got the atlas on the bottom, so when you take a drink, you can see the bottom. It's kind of cool, but uh, it's sweet. It's sweet marketing. That's for yeah, sure. so we we uh, had a great response from that and we sent out a pile of them so we've got a handful still that we've got to catch up with but other mm -hmm. than that it is it was an amazing nurses week next you are very you are very involved were very involved with meet and greets yep and now that kind of getting back to normal we've started talking about those again for sure so in fact just this week i've asked our travelers <clears throat> to tell us where are you and are there other travelers there and should we come out? Like what are the restrictions like where you're at right now and are they lifting? So what, let's talk about those a little bit building up to obviously TravCon in, yep. in September. You know, the, the meet and greet was something that we've done since I started and that was even here before I came aboard and I feel like it was the first step in, I think that's why we've done such a good job at TravCon because we had a chance to get out and meet these travelers in mm -hmm. these, say it was Reno or it was, um, you know, one of our, and sometimes it's not even a highly dense, dense, uh, population like, of travel nurses. Right. It might just be somewhere there's like five, mm -hmm. but it's, it's an area that we've never gone to before. So it lets us get in there and kind of meet them and get to know the area. And, and that's a big thing is once we get to know an area, then the recruiter can speak to it. Like, Hey, I know what's in Reno or I know mm -hmm. what's here. And they can say, you need to go check this out. It's, it's a great place. It's not what you think, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, it, I'm really looking forward to getting back into that. And again, that is something that um, I think we will probably go full bore with once we feel like everybody is, you know, confident that we have um, some of the restrictions are relaxed mm -hmm. a little bit. And then yeah. also that our nurses and our um, recruiters feel comfortable traveling as right. well. So Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's we found, uh, I'll, do, I'll give you an example in St. Louis, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you've actually been there with us one time, the Broadway Oyster Bar which is two blocks you think oh, an oyster bar in st louis missouri yeah like that doesn't that sounds like a recipe for disaster it's like buying out of a vending machine correct yeah, yeah like yeah. gas station sushi <laughs> right that not a good idea yeah. however so two blocks down from from bush stadium is this little hole in the wall oyster bar and it is awesome we've had so much fun there and now i've seen travelers post pictures yep. in our st louis traveler board on facebook about them going down there and hanging out with other travelers. Right. So and you would never know that was there. No, right, we ever. would never have known. And it was a local that told us about it. Our cab driver from the airport told us about it. So we said, hey, this is where we're going. This is what we're doing. And he said, okay, this is the place you need to go. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And that's what you get when you get down there. And we try to do as much research as possible. Yep. And it's not just like we go out to eat. We typically are doing something, mm -hmm. right? Like last time, I think we did a big whale watching excursion with a yeah. bunch of travelers out in Washington. And mm -hmm. Um, so we're always doing something, you know, that's, that's fun. And so, yeah, of course the locals, and then, you know, for the travelers, they feel like a local, right? When they're going to those local places and they're getting to eat the local food and they're not, you know, they're not going to the commercial, um, right. you know, Applebee's and stuff like that. They're figuring out cause they're invested in for 15 weeks in that place. So right. they want to find somewhere fun and have a good experience. So TravCon's in September. Uh-huh. 
we're start we're already talking about it here we're yeah full bore yeah. so give me an idea of like the preparations that you've made on your end right so at this point it's it's been interesting because trying to um reserve places in mm-hmm. vegas right now is they're still kind of hit and miss um whether something's going to be open what the restrictions are um you know when you have that many travelers in one place and, and vegas is used to that but mm-hmm. it's it's just slow it's taking time so as we when they say well how many people do you have well you can only have six for this well we normally would have 80 and so right. it's it's going to be kind of a learning experience, I think, for everybody. And we're hopeful that by the time September hits, stuff is relaxed a little bit and we can kind of get back to normal. What people are used to in Vegas. Okay, so out of – because we do the four different events, right? Okay, this year we're doing four events. Right. We've done – traditionally, we've only done three. Yep. So breakfast in the morning, pool party in the late morning, early afternoon. Yep. Then happy hour, which event – that venue might change. Yep. Uh, happy hour in the afternoon, and then now bus tour in the evening. Right. What's your favorite one? I would say breakfast. Yep. Hands down. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's funny because you are so wiped out from you know the night before. Just yeah. you know you're you're constantly going. Just go 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 go. But you have to be up at five or six, and sometimes it was one or two before you got home. <sighs> but that yeah. breakfast, I think, is probably my favorite because it's everybody's just calm and it's a great chance to sit down to meet with people. And uh, you have coffee and a great breakfast, and it's just a great way to start the day. That I think that's my favorite too. Is it as much? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I really enjoy. I I just enjoy Las Vegas anyway. Yeah, and I like the 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 action and the movement and just sure. the, every the lights and the sound. I just I I've, I've always loved that. But yeah, you're right. That those couple hours every morning, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, is is just it's just nice. Yeah, it's and I think nice. Sunday is probably my best because it's everybody's you know kind of gearing up for the week, and mm-hmm. we're. For the most part, kind of, you know, that's our last day there right. in Vegas. Um, and we're still going to have a place at the actual conference. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll have the spouse's booth there. And that's just a place for anybody to hang out. And, yep. and it just, you know, because there's a lot of husband and wives travel and they don't have anything to do. And they don't want to go follow their spouse around while they get certified in something. So they can just hang out there with us and... Mm-hmm. And uh, just relax. We started that probably three years ago yep. now. And yep. the number of spouses that we've met along the way has increased every single year yeah. since then. And typically, it's the same person. They'll just like, hey, I'll, I'll be over here. And they just hang out with us and yep. and relax. And, and um, you know, we're looking forward to it. But I, we're, I feel like we are ahead of the game nor- than we're, where we are normally mm-hmm. because we don't know. There's so much unknown. So we're right. just trying to make sure that we have all our ducks in a row before – you know, going into August and, and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to Vegas. It's going to be a great time. Well, thanks for coming in. Today. You bet. Uh, thanks for having it me. It was good to have it's you. It's been a year, for... man. It's, I, I miss, miss you guys. <sighs> we miss you too. Yeah. So, so here we Zoom are. Zoom is just not the same. Nope. It's not. So, all right, Matt. Thank all right, you so much. Take care. Much. Yep. See you next week. <laughs>